What's up guys? We're going to see the overview of this plug and before which is the transient state. And I know we've been working with steady state all these blocks. MB1 is actually everything in steady state. MB2 and MB3 is the same stuff. This is only theory. Well, not theory, but I say mass balance with applied theory. So what happens when we change to transient state? Let's hit that. We're going to see first of all theory once again because many people don't actually understand what's a transient state. We're going to see how or when does that happen and you will see that every time that happens that you're going to have this accumulation concept which is essentially a derivative of mass with respect of time. And this can be very tricky guys because you can have a system in which the total mass is zero the derivative you change no mass but I don't know for example the mass it, let's say is a tank of water and salt let's say the water doesn't change or the addition of water and salt doesn't change but the let's say the derivative of salt or mass of salt does change with time so even though this will be steady state when you do your mass balance this will be steady state this one will not be steady state, this will be a transient state. So by definition, if you have something that changes with time, even though it's only a concentration or a total mass or moles or whatever, if you have at least one, it turns a, into a transient state problem. So maybe you say it, everything turns into a transient state. That's uh, not true actually. Many processes are continuous, but there are also many processes that are in transient state. So that's why it's important to know when or why to use the transient state or the steady state. So once you actually understand what's that, we continue with our general methodology similar to the one of steady state or the one we see in, I think, block MB1, which is the introduction to mass balance, but this time for transient state. And essentially it is how to treat this accumulation concept and how to calculate that because you know that this is derivatives and they turn out to be integrals and many integrals are not that easy to solve or sometimes you can not even have a nice integral you will need to use numeric numerical methods or whatever to get that so just take that as a general methodology and how to solve that and we're going to see what's a differential and an integral mass balance, which I think we've seen before, but just a small overview. What we've done so far in all the other courses or blocks was differential mass balances. It's, let's say, in, dif in different in instance or rates. You know mass flow is kilograms per second. That's a something typical for differential. And integral is essentially when you integrate that. So let's say you have from time 0 to time 10, you get this quantity and you will get not 10 kilos, but let's say it was 10 hours, then it's 100 kilograms. Whereas before it was 10 kilograms per hour. And finally guys, once you get that theory, we can start doing problems. I split this section into two problems, or into two types of problems. The ones that you can do analytically, which sounds very fancy, but I like to call it the ones that you can actually do by hand with a computer, maybe a calculator or so, and the ones that you need to do with a computer. That they are complex. It doesn't mean that you cannot do it by hand, but it means that it takes a lot of time. It's very easy to get confused. And probably you're going to get a lot of theory of mathematics and numerical method that probably you do not know. So that's why it's a shame that you get to know the mass balance but not to solve it in math. So that's why essentially they tell you plug this into a computer and magic happens and you get your answers. And yeah, that's the problem with that is that probably you're going to see those mathematics and those numerical methods in I don't know, maybe one year or two years, but you need to see the course right now, so that's the problem, guys. And essentially, that's everything for the transient state. It's not that long or that uh, big uh, topic, 
but it's important. So I do recommend it to see at least if you know you're not going to have that in exams or in your problems or whatever, just have a easy review of that, understand when or why to use the transient state. So see you in the next video, guys. What's up guys? It's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or if I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.